You know what's so awesome? We got to share with everyone. We live in the same state. Yes, free <laughs> country of Florida. <laughs> Amen. That's awesome. Well, welcome. How do you like it so far? I don't like it. I love it. I I've already told my California friends. Ooh, I don't know about ever coming back to California, to be honest, but Hey, you never, you never know where life can bring you. And I always just say, I'm a bucket list person. And I, I go wherever my heart takes me, but Florida is incredible. Yeah. It's amazing. It's so beautiful. I always say you need a passport to live in Miami though. Cause Miami is a little crazy. <laughs> <laughs> Miami is kind of like, um, like LA or Vegas. Yeah. It's an adult yeah. playground. You know, it's, it's a little, a little wild to the wild yeah, side. It's a little wild. And I'm in uh nicey niceville. So it's a little bit different. It's um definitely 2.5 golden retriever, all the neighbors wave. Um, yeah, it's pretty awesome. <laughs> That's wonderful. Well, we are so happy to have you here in Florida. Thank and you. if you guys don't know Emily, I would recommend checking out our episode, which is episode 15 that we did about Emily and her story and how she overcame Grace disease. And now she is a fantastic personal trainer, nutritionist and bodybuilder, an amazing human being. No. Oh that has been helping me on my health journey uh, the last, uh, I would say, probably a couple of months now. And what I love the most about you, besides so many wonderful things that <laughs> so many wonderful ways that you are is that you never pushed me into anything. And you were always so thoughtful to ask all the detailed questions and really listen and understand what some of my challenges and the issues were. And uh, I liked it that you never kind of pushed me into doing certain things. Oh, you know, like you have to do this or you have to do that or you have to work out or things like that. But you just said to me this one line that I'll never forget is I'm here to help you to be the best version of you. No. And that was kind of so amazing because it got to my why, right? Mm -hmm. Why am I doing this? because I want to be a best version of myself. And then even though without you saying much about it, I was like, am I a best version of myself? You know, you start questioning it. Like, Honest questions. Happy? Yeah. yeah. Where I am with, uh, and, and of course I started working with you because of my gut issues and the nutrition mm -hmm. issues. And then, then I'm like, like, am I at the weight where I want to be? Do I physically look as healthy as I want to be? And, you know, like this week is my birthday week and I'm turning 41. Yeah. <laughs> so it always makes you think about things like yep. in a different perspective, like puts things in a different way that, oh, yep. shoot, I'm in my 40s now. So are you so getting better every year? Or are you one of those people that's like, oh, it's all downhill over 40? You when you were 25, and you're being told that by a 40 year old, you're like, I'm never going to be that person. And then you right. have to check yourself and go, am I that person, you should be getting better. I always say if I took myself at 27, 28, when I had Graves disease, fibromyalgia, Crohn's got all these diagnoses. I mean, that, that was my resume. No, thanks. I'm better at 43 than I was then. I feel better. I have more energy. I'm happier. And more than anything, my mentality changed because it's really a mentality. Right. So knowing your why is so important. Not just like, I, I want to lose 10 pounds. I want to be able to look good when I flex or like <laughs> fit into this dress that's fine. It's okay. If those are your goals, if that's all that you have on your list of why we need more. We need to dig deep emotionally and spiritually first. Right. So, let's talk about this journey that you've mm -hmm. put me on. I'm so excited uh, because I reached out to you and I told you that I have SIBO, which is a small intestinal bacterial overgrowth. S-I-B-O, if anybody wants to look that up, because a lot of people haven't heard of it, but a lot of people suffer with it. Right, right. And I had no idea what it was before either. Um, and with that condition, I should say, like, there are a lot of like vegetables and certain foods that I can't eat or tolerate. And that was one of the reasons I gave up eating meat 
two years ago because I couldn't digest it. And I became a pescatarian. I still did do or did a little bit of dairy and eggs. Um, I, I truly enjoyed that and I can digest it. So when I reached out to you, you were so amazing because you wrote this whole meal plan for me that included fish, a lot of seafood, and we did some juicing, which mm -hmm. I'm enjoying my juice today. And can I just mention that if people are noticing when they watch the video, no digging right now, Brandy. <laughs> we had a little frowny dog. Digging back to Thailand. You know, you say <laughs> dig to China. I always say he digs to Thailand. Um, but I have hard floors now, so can't do that. Uh, your skin. Your skin glows. I think you've mm -hmm. always had good skin, but your skin literally is so radiant. And that is a vegetable juicing right there. Yes. And a lot of people are like, you're glowing. You're, did you meet someone? You're glowing. And I'm like, it's my <laughs> do. Her name's Emily. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And she's a fabulous redhead. <laughs> <laughs> no, you really have uh, changed uh, my life to so much better because I wake up every day and I'm not in pain, right? That was like my awesome. biggest thing is my gut. And it's that all mm -hmm. that bloating and retaining all that water. Mm -hmm. I would wake up really swollen. I would wake up like, um, like I, I looked chubbier, right? In but I wasn't- Inflammation. Yeah. It's because when the body can't digest things or it's taking in things that it can't process because of it needs its energy to heal. But if you're not giving your body what it needs to heal, it's going to have an inflammatory response. It's like that, that red flag, but inflammation on top of inflammation on top of inflammation without it getting addressed is going to turn into puffy, swollen, and then the next steps are diseases, which you never got to because you saw something and said, this needs to be addressed. Sometimes people put themselves and their health last and they end up with a disease. Then they think that they're screwed. They're done. I got this disease. I'm labeled. No, you're just further along in a process because you didn't watch the red flag, something like bloating and the indigestion and the inflammation. Those are waving red flags. And you were so good to take care of those right away. And, and right. look how fast you can reverse. I always say, you're not born with it. Why, why are you going to accept this as, as your reality and think that you're stuck this way? Because you're not. It's lifestyle choices. That's it. It's so true. But I've had this for so many years, like at least like 15, 20 years I've been dealing with this, like going yeah. back and forth, back and forth. And you go to the doctors, they give you antibiotics and I feel better, but then it comes back in um, three to four or five months, you know? Yeah. So and then you go to talk to other doctors and they're like fiber, fiber, fiber. But I'm like, well, fiber doesn't necessarily make me feel better. It makes me feel yeah. worse in certain cases. Right. Yeah. Or like TMI, but going to the bathroom and they're like, well, some people are meant to go to the bathroom every day. Well, no, like that's not the answer I'm looking for. Right. Thank you, misinformed drug pusher. <laughs> and I'm done. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. So talk to me. How do you design um, individual plants for people? Because sure. I, I think you're so flexible. Like I'm sending you a friend of mine that doesn't eat vegetables and you're mm -hmm. like, no problem. Like I yeah. got it. And I tell everyone about your most successful client that she said, I'm not giving up my olive garden. Yeah. So how do you make these plants work for everyone kind of yeah. customized for each individual? Yeah. Well, I look at every single person should be treated like an individual. I guess it would have started with my whole journey. I wasn't treated like an individual. That was part of the problem. It was, you have Graves disease, you have fibromyalgia, you have Crohn's, you have whatever, all the diagnosis, irritable bowel. This is what we do for people that right. have your label. We give these meds then you come see me every three weeks. We do blood work. If the blood work looks like this, we give these meds. And then you have these side effects. And then these side effects get treated with this med. I was just like, okay, I'm not going to have pharmaceutical drugs thrown at me because they're not the answer they're, I realized they're not getting to the root of the problem. Number one, and you're not treating me like an individual. You're literally treating me like a diagnosis on a piece of paper. 
And no, none of it, none of that works. We are individual. Every cell in our body is different. And we are different from one day to the next, depending on the stress level in our life, um, the climate that we live in, um, our mentality. If we're going through a trauma, if we've been through a trauma, I feel that a lot of, of fitness and health and nutrition professionals don't take into consideration the individual like really holistically, like I always say, I'm a holistic fitness nutrition specialist. I'm a Mm -hmm. holistic personal trainer. Sometimes people think holistic means like, I'm going to throw CBD oil at you and tell you to meditate peppermint oil on, you know, (laughs) and do yoga. And I'm like, no, we have to break all that. Um, right. you're an individual. If yoga works for you, we're going to implement that. If vegetables are not your thing, I'm going to find a way to get some, you know, nutrient dense foods into you without telling you to eat broccoli every night. I just treat every, I listen to people just like I wished that I had somebody to listen to me. I didn't have anybody listen to me. I had to figure it out on my own, um, the hard way, but you learn so much more that way. I would never take it back. I always say, Graves disease was the best thing that ever happened to me because I really was, who knows what I might've saved myself from in the right. long run, but right. I learned about nutrition, about health, about the individual. Um, and I just treat my client. I treat people the way I want to be treated. I'm special, unique, amazing. I'm an individual and I should be treated that way. I have people that come to me that the root of their problem is complete severe depression or anxiety it the root of their problem is all emotional and then i have other people that literally they just literally don't know what to eat or how to lift weights they're really easy um everyone's different to lift weights <laughs> <laughs> but we're gonna get into that today yes yes i did i saw I'm your so video sore. everything weights. hurts i'm so sorry today i love it I love it. Yes. And let's talk about cell core for a second. Cause mm-hmm. one of the first questions that you asked me was, do you eat sushi? Because yeah. I'm a pescatarian. And I said, I sure do. I love sushi. And you're yeah. like, well, you might have parasites. <laughs> if you have a pulse, you have parasites. The girl, wow. my girlfriend, Jennifer, that introduced me to cell core. I'm so thankful for her. She is a vegan and she mm-hmm. eats probably the cleanest of anybody that I can even think of her whole family. They're super clean eaters and vegans. And she knew about cell core because she had parasites, several parasites. And she had, I won't say your last name, so don't worry. She had a, a parasite nest fall out of her from cleansing. She was able to cleanse it out with cell core. Now this is a beautiful, perfect looking, super fit vegan. You don't right. think that person has parasites. So they say, if you have a pulse, you have parasites. We all have parasites. Not all of them are super dangerous, but parasites over time can lead to astronomical um, chronic illnesses if they are left untreated. People can have parasites in them for decades and decades. So our water, animals, if you live with animals, you got parasites. Um, our water, the air, walking barefoot. I mean, you get it from everything. You could touch an apple in the grocery store and it gets on you and you go like this and the parasite gets in through your eye, gets into your system and parasites do what? Lay eggs. They're like bunnies. They're like mice. They're just, they infest and they can be very hard to get rid of. So whenever anybody has bloating, tired, exhausted, but especially the bloating and constipation, I'm like, we have to do a parasite cleanse because it will help your gut, even if you didn't have a parasite, but you do, (laughs) we all do, but it will help your gut. So it's meant to um, heal the gut and also eliminate parasites. And I didn't know I had parasites. Jennifer told me about this cleanse. I did it. I was pulling multiple foot long and three foot long mucoidal plaque ropes. I've taken pictures. And a lot of you guys who have messaged me, I've sent the pictures, they're ropes, like the rope climb when you're in elementary school. (laughs) I I know when you told me about that, I was 
so afraid. I was like, what is going to come out of me? But everyone's different. You didn't have mucoidal plaque. Yeah. No. Cause you probably haven't taken a lot of medications. I had medications for years from having, you know, my doctors prescribe me things for my thyroid. Um, and yeah, I got rid of the mucoidal plaque and lo and behold, my energy level went through the roof. I was just like, wow, I could have just, you know, not said anything to her. She could have not called me that day. We, it was just divine timing. So the cell cord, they're not just, um, parasite cleansing. But mm -hmm. when you said bloating, I was like, we got to do a cell core parasite cleanse. And then it, you know, how right. did it do for your gut? Amazing. And within a week, I noticed my energy change drastically. Yeah. Cause usually like when I go into the studio and I work those three days of 12 hours a day, standing on my feet, I would come home and by nine 30, 10 o'clock, I would like literally shower and I was out. Yeah, I've been staying up till like midnight, 1am. I'm reading, I have energy, even though yeah. my workload is still the same, right? Nothing has changed except my diet and the cleanse that I've been doing. Yeah. And these so are not it, supplements with caffeine in them or anything, just so people know these are herbs. And exactly. these are things that they get, especially from like India. And they're very, uh, I did a lot of research and I trust Jennifer implicitly with her research and how she is about everything she puts in her body. But I did a lot of research and I was so impressed um, because the owner used all these supplements on his own family to help heal his own illnesses. Um, and there's no caffeine. They're all herbs. Yeah. It's just mother nature gives us everything we need to heal. And some people say, why do you need supplementation? We can get everything from food. <laughs> well, I hate to wake you up, but our food system, our water, and our air is poisoned. It's yes. poisoned everything. Yes. And it's That's just true. a yeah. fact. It's not yes. something to lose sleep over. It's knowledge is power. And that's knowledge that people need to have because that is a reality. So we need to supplement. We need to drain um, our lymphatic system. We need to be able to cleanse our liver. We need to regenerate our organs and they need help. And we are the help. Knowledge is power. Yes, so. definitely. So and the my self mom... supplements are mine. Like, yes, that line is incredible. Yeah, yeah, it definitely is. And my mom kind of started doing the the whole nutrition part with me. Yeah. And because you know, she she helps me prep all the juices and everything. And she she has a fatty liver. So I just order her through cell core, the liver cleanse. So I'm right. so excited to see her results along kind of mine because she's yep. kind of jumped on that train with me. So and she's super grateful to you, by the way. She says thank oh. you, Emily, all the time. <laughs> oh, can't wait to meet you, mama. <laughs> yes, she's yeah. she's a, a character. So you gotta get sure. her doing the coffee enemas for her liver. Yes. Okay. So let's talk about <laughs> that. Let's thing. get right into it. Did you let's see I posted, about that thing? <laughs> I posted yesterday just a quick little um quick little video of me putting together my coffee mm -hmm. enema and my blog. So if you guys go to emilyreynolds.net blogs, drop down to coffee enema, it will tell you the history of coffee enemas, exactly how to do them, everything that you need. So Tell us about your coffee enema experience. I know when you told me in the beginning I had to do that, I was horrified. I mean, it would it took me like, and I ordered everything right away because I'm a yeah. very good student. I follow yes, directions to the T. So, you know, by the time I think I was on vacation. So by the time I got back from um, Arizona, everything arrived and I had everything. Like I had organic coffee enema, the whole kit. Uh, everything that I needed. So the, the, I opened the, the kit and he was sitting on my shelf and I was looking at it and he was looking at me. I was looking at it. He was looking at me. Which part was looking? Was it the tip? <laughs> Just the whole bucket. I was like, mm, mm, I don't know about you. I don't know how I feel about you. So I was just so scared and I don't know why, but yeah. then I went into Everyone your blog is. I read about it. I was like, okay, if I mess this up, there's no way I'm going to do it again. Right. So don't mess it up. Do it right. It Follow the directions. So I did. And it was so easy. It yeah. was so, it was so surprisingly easy. And, you know, when I share some of this with my close friends or some of my clients, everybody was like, like, how did it get in? You know, like that's the <laughs> biggest thing. And I was like, 
honestly, like, I was like, thank God for Emily. She told me to coconut oil that shit up. <laughs> <laughs> so I did. You just I lube up the lid. Yeah. It's, it's honestly, it's smaller than your pinky tip. It's tiny. You don't feel yeah. anything. And I no. literally didn't even feel any water going. I had to look inside the bucket and be like, is everything in, you know? So I yeah. was laying on my left side and, and it was fine. Like it was fine until it, like your stomach started like making this gurgly noises. Uh-huh. And I was like, oh boy, I don't think I can hold it anymore. Cause I think the block says to hold it for 15 minutes and I was able to do it yeah. for five. Well, to 15 minutes, but I would say most people in the beginning, two to five minutes the first time. And that's fine. Yeah. You'll get to the point where you can insert the coffee enema stand up, walk around your house, do some things, the alarm goes off and you sit on the toilet and then you eliminate it. Your body does get accustomed to it. So tell me why coffee, what, what, what does coffee do and why animas, right? Cause yes. I, I didn't understand before you. So if you can kind of give us some download on that would be awesome. Sure. So it's very important that it's organic coffee. Number one, I always want to state that because or, um, coffee is very heavily sprayed with pesticides. So you do not want to be cleansing your liver with pesticide sprayed coffee. It would defeat the mm. purpose. So you have to do organic. Right. The lighter the roast, the better. Green beans are great, but you even if you have a medium, it's better than nothing. But the less roasted the coffee, the better. It's not dangerous if it's dark roast. It's just not going to be as powerful. So it's palmitates that it's basically the the chemical compound in the coffee that cleanses the liver. And the way that it gets, so people say, oh, I'll just drink it. No, no, no. It doesn't get to your liver that way. So it's your portal vein that's in your hemorrhoid basically in your so you have to go through your lung but to get to the portal vein that goes right into your liver so it takes the coffee delivers it in there the palmitates or the chemical that cleanses out your liver so it's a extremely powerful liver cleanse so it will detox your liver and shed all the toxins out and you eliminate it and your liver actually, even after the coffee enema, you're basically training your liver to detox. So medications, toxins in the air, water, food, everything, you're training your liver to detox and to shed those toxins out of your body because respiration, perspiration, defecation, and urination are how we get rid of toxins, right? And if you go to the hospital and you're dehydrated, like severely dehydrated, where do they give you your water to become hydrated in your butt? If you um, need a supplement put into you fast in your butt, because that portal vein, it just delivers things super fast. So it's like if you're swallowing a pill that's coated in gelatin, it takes a while to break down. Something better would be spraying under your tongue, a liquid. It's more easily digestible, but a lot of our supplementation is through enema. It's more successful. It's faster. It's more potent. Um, and there's no danger to coffee enemas. Like people will Google the Googlers, <laughs> the Googlers, <laughs> the danger of coffee enemas. Can I die? I'm like, why would you Google that? I mean, go ahead, Google it. But, um, you know, right. people have that fear. They Google, can I die from a coffee enema? And I just love it. I go, oh my gosh, that's a personality type, I swear. Um, coffee enemas were in the Merck manual, which is the manual that doctors have on how to heal diseases, all the things that you do when somebody comes in and with a complaint, it was in the Merck manual until pharmaceutical companies came around in the 1940s. And it got taken out of the Merck manual because people would come in with all sorts of illnesses, depression, anxiety, um, lip, fatty liver, everything, pain, chronic pain, coffee enema, coffee enema, coffee enema. First thing they would do is give you a coffee enema. It was discovered actually wow. in the war when they couldn't get like, you know, they'd be missing a limb or they'd be bleeding. And these guys were in so much pain and they would have to ship the meds, you know, to them. And sometimes they couldn't get the meds fast enough. And some nurse just took a pot of coffee as an experiment. And she said, maybe this will help relieve the pain through an enema. And it did. So it got in the Merck manual. They used it in hospitals. 
big pharma came and said, "Uh, uh, 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 we're not about healing people. Take that out. So they took it out and then they started the propaganda. <clears throat> the propaganda machine of the big pharma said, poppy enemas are bad. They're dangerous. You could perforate your rectum. You know, you're going to end up like, you know, getting abducted by aliens if you do a coffee enema. <laughs> and everyone's like, coffee enemas are bad or they're just not known. And then right. when you Google, people will think, I, I don't want to do that. It's all propaganda. Right. Yeah, they're powerful. They're used by the Gerson Institute. That's a cancer healing um, institution in Mexico, Dr. Max Gerson. He was a huge fan of coffee enemas. They do up to five a day with their cancer patients. Wow. Amazing. Yeah. But you said for me it was once a week, right? For a normal yes. person, you start them with, with once a week or do you recommend? Yeah, them? once a week just to get used to it. We'll get you up to five times a day. Don't you worry, Maddie. Just kidding. What? <laughs> just I just kidding. up for that. For, <laughs> yeah. Hell you, you can come now. <laughs> <laughs> you're going to definitely get abducted by the little green guys. Um, so yeah, a, a, a chronically ill diseased person is going to get treated differently than someone who's just trying to um, prevent disease. So you're in a preventative right. stage. So right. um, there are day, weeks where I do a coffee enema every single day. But the only thing that you do want to, which we've talked about, juicing goes along with enemas because you are going to get rid of some good bacteria too. So you want to replace it. So I say pop a probiotic, drink a green drink. So you're refueling your body. So when you're detoxing, you're stripping away, but you're are, you are going to strip away some good. So you don't want to take all the probiotics, but it's nothing like taking an antibiotic that strips everything good right. and destroys you. So this is going to do good for you, but you're going to get a little bit of um, the good the good stuff out of you. So you need to replenish, but that that's a basic. We are constantly replenishing after you lift weights, after you run, you replenish more water, nutrient dense food. So it's really just, you know, it's just a type of replenishment. Right. Probiotics, yeah, totally makes veggie sense. juice. Mm -hmm. yeah. and, and I love that uh, when, when I started this whole thing, you know, you were like, okay, so how, how, how do you feel with your weight where I know you, we were, we are working on your gut health and mm -hmm. you were so good at it, you know, to like, kind of make me think about things without putting too much pressure on me. And I was yeah. like, yeah, how do I feel about my weight? Like, yes, I, I accept. And I love myself the way that I am, but I was like, I would like to lose 10 pounds, you know, like that yeah. would be great. And then you kind of came in and you said, okay, let's, cut down on uh, calorie intake and do one day of just juices yeah. and because I after have SIBO, getting you used to your meal plan. Yep. Baby right, steps. right, right, right. Exactly. And, and I was ready. Cause I really do enjoy juicing. Like I'm one of those weird people that I really do enjoy juicing. I so am too. yeah. When you sent me that, um, that one day juice and you were like, okay, I had to do some research on SIBO and it basically has cucumber celery mm -hmm. carrots and an orange so yeah. it, it's so delicious this is what i'm drinking today because today's my juice day whole day cucumbers juice day. are like the most refreshing yeah. juice ever i love cucumber juice it's amazing and it has a little bit of sweetness because of the orange yeah and it's so delicious it really doesn't bother me at all so and then you said to do that once a week. And if someone wants to do a little bit more weight, would you recommend doing it a couple of times a week or how does that work? Yeah, it would all depend on that person, what they can take. If you have blood sugar issues, it might be harder to do a whole day of juicing. Um, it's really the person. If you're an intense athlete, it could be really tough for you. If you're an experienced intermittent faster, that's nothing. You could maybe do two days. But I always mm. say those would be the days you do some meditation and relaxing or prayer. Um, if you do yoga, if you're into that, I'm not a yoga person. <laughs> um, it would be more the relaxing days. Like if you're like, I'm going to be in my office and I do my journaling and my prayers today, yeah. that would be your day to do the juicing, not your day. Like I'm going to do legs like me the other day, I'm going to do legs and then I'm going to paddle board for the first time for four hours. I wouldn't have juiced that day. <laughs> right. I wouldn't have juiced all day. I would drink right. juice, but I wouldn't juice all day that day. That's the day that I would have my treat meal, not cheat meal. Cause that's mentally not okay to tell yourself it's a cheat meal. It's a treat meal. 
Yeah. So what are your thoughts on just all meat diet? I think. Yeah. It, it works for some people. I, the only concern of mine long-term with something like that, that I have seen with the keto diet, um, short term, it has been proven, um, to reduce cancer, like shrink cancer cells. Um, it helps to, people to lose weight short term, short term, um, long term. My concern would be colon cancer and um, digestive issues because I don't right. think we're supposed to be. It takes a lot of energy to digest meat. You know, you eat a steak; it takes hours to digest it. It takes nothing; it takes seconds, minutes to digest vegetable juice or steamed veggies and fruits um, that are more friendly to the body. So it's uh, the all meat diet is not for me, but some people it works okay for them. But short term, I would never say uh, like there is a keto craze. I'm not about craze with anything. It's funny. People think me walking barefoot and drinking veggie juice and doing coffee. And I'm, I'm crazy. Um, I think you're crazy <laughs> that you hear some fitness model with a good body does something and you follow it. I think that's crazy. Um, so the keto craze was a big thing, but I've known people, I've known clients that they have been hospitalized after nine months on keto. And then they come to me going, but I was told by my super fit, amazing buff trainer on steroids um, that this was, <laughs> this is the way to go. Maybe it does work for them. Not calling, right. not calling them out on that, but um, it didn't work for you. But right. long-term I've seen and known people with um, health side effects. So, yeah, and there is a big sense. uptick in colon cancer, colorectal cancer in America and Europe. And I'm curious to see in the long run, how that pans out. If, if they find that it is linked to this keto craze. Yeah. Interesting. And it's not, it's not like these people are living on farms and they're drinking raw milk and they're, they're slaughtering their, their own, own meat. Yeah. Cattle that eats grass. No, mm -hmm. you, you're no. They, right. So yeah, makes so sense. I will never say black or white about something like that. Every individual is different, but yeah, if you're living on, you know, like where I live is near Alabama and I've already heard of stories, people like, oh yeah, we raised our own goats and we had cows. And, and if they ate like a dairy diet raw and had a lot of meat, they're probably a healthy person. <laughs> but right. if you're, if you're getting fast food takeout with, you know, the plastic cheese on it and you're drinking, you know, milk from the grocery store i will pray for you yeah for sure <laughs> for sure so talk to me about weightlifting why is it important because you just got me started on a little yes. bit i'm so sorry <laughs> you're so sorry you're like nothing <laughs> <A little muscle. laughs> are you driving your car like this <laughs> yeah like a t-rex hand yeah. like washing my hair like <laughs> everything hurts because i haven't i'm a runner I do a lot of cardio. I love running outside. I know people think I'm crazy, but it's just my meditation, my time. Yeah. I just put my music on and I can go. And I never put any pressure on myself how many miles I'm going to do. I just go and I do whatever. Yeah. Like sometimes I'll run two miles. Sometimes I'll run nine miles. You know, it depends yep. how I feel. And that never day. give that up. When something yeah. brings you joy, follow it. Yeah. yeah. And you know, and it's so beautiful where I run because it's right by the water. I look yep. at these beautiful mansions, you know. <laughs> I thought you said men, mentions. No, no man. No man. No, <laughs> Just <listeners>. mentions. <laughs> You're off in another dimension thinking about Yeah, I mean my yeah. own bubble, you know. That's I'm awesome. Just like putting good energy and vibes out there. So it's definitely, it helps me to clear my head. I really yep. love it. But when I get into the gym, I get very intimidated, right? I don't know mm -hmm. my way around. And then you see all these like, freaking guys, they're like, ooh, ooh, making noises. <laughs> and they're like throwing shit down. And I'm like, oh, I don't want to go there, right? <laughs> <laughs> it's so funny because they are usually what scare most people in the gym, men and women that aren't into bodybuilding or weightlifting, those type of people. But what's so ironic is 
if you need help in the gym, they are typically the best person to ask because they're super helpful. Um, most, most of them have their story. They, they weren't born just like I say, people aren't born with disease. People are not born buff bodybuilders. You right. have to work just as hard to be super fit as you do. Some people are going to totally hate this to be super fat and sick. Mm. You have to work just as hard at Makes both. Sense. We all put so much effort you know, bodybuilders might not have as much of a social life or might not go out to eat. They have to pick their battles, right? But people who are fat, sick, and nearly dead, like that great documentary, people put work into that and they neglect certain things mm. like themselves. Um, but when it comes to weightlifting, it's super important for men and women, but particularly for women, as we get older, over age 30, we just lose bone. We don't gain bone. So you don't want to be losing bone mass. You don't want osteoporosis, um, arthritis. You want to be keeping what you have. You're not going to add any more after a certain mm -hmm. age, right? So you want to keep what you have. And um, older, I would say like maybe my parents' generation, definitely my grandma's generation, there was no weightlifting. It was like maybe the old German yoga um, and some stretching, Tai Chi, things like that, which are amazing too. But there was women weren't really lifting weights. Now it's much more popular and it's a great thing. It's not a craze. It's it's here to stay because I think people are realizing that you want your bones and your joints to be strong. You don't want to be the old person that's falling. You don't want to be the person that's crippled over like this. Our muscles surround our spine, which keep us held upright and all of our nerves run along our spine. So if you are like this, and your muscles are sagging and you're going like this, not only are you in pain, mm -hmm. more likely to fall, your bones are brittle, your nerves are all getting crushed. I mean, it is just, again, health is holistic. There's always so much more to things than you think. Your spine being upright, having good posture, having muscle around your, around your structure is so important for your health for the oxygen levels of your brain, for you to be able to think, for you to be able to not be depressed. It's everything. So weightlifting is not just Arnold <laughs> with the beach. <laughs> it's your health. You don't have to live hefty, heavy. And right. you don't even have, you can do body weight. You can do body weight. You can do bands. You could be a bodybuilder if you want to. Um, but yeah, and, it, and then there gets to be the fine line where you don't want to go too extreme you know, which right. like I always say, some, not all CrossFit, the, the, the extreme sports, they have a lot more pain and they need to be at chiropractors all the time. For me, that's not for me. I don't want to be in constant pain. I really want to build muscle around my structure to hold me up, help me be hourglass shape is nice and fit and healthy and vibrant and alive. So that's yeah. why lifting weights is so important, especially for women. Yeah. And to be lean, you know, I tried actually CrossFit 10 years ago and yeah. I really do build muscle and my yeah. neck was like this big, like my legs <laughs> got, got like this big and like my mom in her cute little accent, she's like, Natalia, instead of getting smaller, you're getting bigger. <laughs> Whatever you're doing is not working for you. <laughs> you know, I was like, damn it, mom, like sugarcoat it a little bit. So I stopped. And plus, I also have a lot of like back issues because of the work that I do. So it yeah. wasn't working for me because I, again, as a runner, I like to be lean and thin yeah. and I don't like to look and it like a dude. metabolism. You know? So if you mm -hmm. have more muscle and less body fat, you're going to have an increased metabolism. So you can go out and enjoy certain foods, you know, and you're just going to have more energy. You're going to sleep better. You're going to have, we really human nature, um, or the way we are built, I should say is to rise with the sun and go to sleep when the moon comes up, when the sun goes down, right. we go down. When the sun comes up, we come up. <laughs> Do most people live that way? Mm -mm. No, no, mm -hmm. we, we stay up late because we're on cell core products and we're like supercharged. No, just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> no, but we work, 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 work. We work ourselves right. to death. We sit, compress our spine on a chair. I mean, it's just, 
we have to be so aware. Again, it's not about like, oh my gosh, like my lifestyle sucks and all these chemicals in the air. You can't be paranoid, but knowledge is power. You might say, you know what? Emily was talking about that with the chair, you know, and I'm on my office desk all the time. I'm going to grab a Swiss ball and every once in a while sit in a Swiss ball and then take a break in between your podcasts and do some, some neck extensions. Since we're like this a lot, you want to do the reverse. So you can stay right. balanced. It's just about being balanced. It's about being exactly being balanced and healthy and being able to live for as long as we do. We are afforded this beautiful, crazy life. We want it to be good quality. For sure. For sure. I agree with you. And what about nutrition versus um, like working out? What percentage is importance of a nutrition like would you say it's 80 20 90 10 what how important nutrition is the whole uh this whole package in this whole package and cleansing the body i'd have to say 90 percent 90 percent because i don't but i also have to disclaim that with when people say i walk my dog i that's that's great. You should walk your dog. You have to walk your dog. Dog needs to walk. That's don't, don't put that down as exercise. <laughs> don't, don't put, put that, that on your exercise. dog. <laughs> You're not getting an award for that. Um, if you're morbidly obese, that might be your exercise and that's awesome. But if you're a mm. generally fit, healthy person who has time and you don't have, um, you know, a chronic, chronic pain issue, there's no excuse to not be exercising 20 minutes a day. I mean, some people, people think you need to take hours. You don't, I might go to the gym for hours because I love it. And I also might take a couple of days off when my body needs it, but I might work out at home and do a more intense workout for 20 minutes. Like the workout that I sent you Yeah. 10 minutes, upper body, 10 minutes, lower body, 10 minutes core. If you did all three, it's a 30 minute workout. You don't need more than that. And it's perfect because it doesn't require gym equipment. Like for someone that's like, again, is intimidated by the gym, you can start in your house, right. get in a little bit of better shape, you know, yeah. that you feel more confident going into the gym yeah. and playing with and the big we, boys. <laughs> and now we live in the age of Zoom, which we're doing now. And I do Zoom workouts with people all the time. And I have some that they turn their camera off. They don't want to be seen. Right. They're not comfortable. You know, maybe they're naked. I don't know. You know, <laughs> good for <laughs> them. <laughs> and they just don't want to be seen. They want to watch me do the workout. They do it alongside. And then I'll mess with them like every once in a while and say something, you know, and they'll be like, did you see that? How did you, is the camera, is the camera really off? I'm like, yes, the camera's off, but I do zoom workouts with people. So mm-hmm. there's just, you know, there's no excuse for sure just, for just sure move your body you know some people mm-hmm. go to a park and just do a little park workout or bring a band with you when you go on a hike and just stop and do a couple different things do a couple bicep curls you know set an alarm on your hike every 10 minutes do some bicep curls some push-ups or just some lunges i remember when i was competing and i was training people all the time and i was very very busy i was traveling to la fitness modeling I was driving everywhere all the time, taking care of people, but I always made sure to get in my workouts. I even would do squats, body weight squats while I was doing, brushing my teeth. And I would just like squeeze, squeeze, squeeze. And I'd be like brushing and squeeze. And when I was driving the car, I would make sure posture abs in, and I would do ab exercises while I was doing the long drive to LA. I Mm. even had a dumbbell in my car. (laughs) I'm not kidding you. I'd be in LA traffic. Cause you're not going anywhere. It's not dangerous. Right. Which, and <laughs> I had tinted windows, but every once in a while, someone would look in and I could tell they saw me. So there is no excuse. It's just what, what's important to you. For sure. For sure. Yeah, and like but, I said, in the beginning, I think you're so easy to work with. You don't put like, you don't sell these things. You know what I mean? You really listen to an individual, you understand what they need and you really work with them. So I think that is so important. Like you never came at me once that I'm like, "Mm, no, like I'm not going to do that except anima, like coffee anima. I was like, "Mm, I was not sure about that. (laughs) But 
tell them how we eased into it. We put a date on the calendar. Yes. Yes. You did put a date on the calendar and you were like, you can call me and let's do this together. And I was like, come on, Natalia, stop being a baby. This is not a big deal. You're just going to have to do it. <laughs> and, and I did, you know, just like, again, like I tell my mom, sometimes it takes me a second to make that commitment to something because I don't ever take, whether it's a job, a project, anything that I do that I don't commit to it. But once I commit to it, I'm 100% in like my mom is always, she always goes like, I'm so amazed. You can have like a pizza for 10 days and then you'll be like, that's it. I'm going to give it up for a year. And you're like, you'll do it. (laughs) You know? So once I hit that, point like okay I'm gonna do it that's it Mm -hmm. now I'm committed to once a week we are doing it and and again like once I overcame that fear of my own stories that I made up in my own head that I don't know what I was gonna feel (laughs) and and it felt fabulous and easy easy like really easy no pain no discomfort can I tell you my my boyfriend does one every day he loves them so much yep I said it and it can't be erased (laughs) it's live he does one every day he does it around the middle of the day in his work day he sometimes works from 5 6 a.m in the morning till 9 or later at night he works a lot and it's sitting down and that afternoon slump instead he does the coffee enema and he said I just feel amazing and it's just his routine he makes the coffee in the morning Morning and he sits the pot and he goes and it's it's just a seamless like I don't even know if he had been in there doing it it's just it literally Amazing. becomes a, a second nature thing I've had so many people have the fear of the coffee enema for years they finally do it and they go I wish I listened to years ago no one has ever said to me I just did one you're crazy I hate you I'm never doing that again no one no one yeah. ever makes sense yeah and so for me with my liver enzymes being so high. I did the coffee enemas and they changed my liver enzymes in two years. It was the only new thing that I incorporated for my liver into my regimen. And my liver enzymes went down to 17. So zero to 40 is where you want them. You obviously want them on the lower range. So they were upwards of 200 and they went down to 17. So I went from an alcoholic level from medications that I was prescribed because I didn't research and I didn't know there were other options. And I gave my doctors the power over me and uh, I felt the repercussions of it. And then I took my power back and became my own best advocate and did my research to coffee enemas and boom. Boom, check a lot, boom, boom. <laughs> Healthy I love liver it. and skin. Oh my gosh, my skin, only my facialist would have been able to see it. The girl that did my facials at the time, it wasn't acne. It was like these white bumps. I had white mm-hmm. bumps on my skin that were they not pimples. It was just these weird. And I started researching Chinese face, face mapping and it was, it was liver and kidneys and they are gone. I mean, they went away immediately. My skin completely changed. Yeah. Princess Diana used to do, um, coffee enemas for her depression. Um, lots, lots and lots of stories that you can go on DuckDuckGo. Don't Google, um, people that have just changed their life with them. So there's just so many answers. You can never stop learning about health, wellness, and nutrition. The workouts are so important. They should be fun. They should be easy. The nutrition and the cleansing is life. That's yes. 90% life changing. Definitely. Yep. So where and can the listeners find you? Yes. I want to offer a special yes. for any of Natty's friends. Yes. <laughs> Just tell me you're a friend of Natalie's uh, Natalia, Natty, Natty B. So many yeah. good nicknames for you. So many. <laughs> I customize everything. I send paperwork. Mm-hmm. If you, I ask for most recent blood work, if you guys have it. Um, So I take all that into consideration. I do a customized meal plan with a cleansing regimen, recommend supplements, a lifestyle program, even ways to detox your home life um, to help you. Cause I want people to see progress. I want them to not need me. Um, 
I usually do that for 299. I'm doing it for 199 for your clients yes. and friends and listeners. You're so. amazing. Yes. Yeah. Thank you so much, my friend. That's wonderful. And where can the listeners find you? Yeah. EmilyReynolds.net. And it's Reynolds with a Y. Sometimes people get that wrong. It's like Reynolds wrap, aluminum foil, mm-hmm. you know. Together, so awesome. And I'll put Emily your Reynolds. website in the description, the podcast yep. description as well. And hope, let's reconnect in a couple yep. of months and then we I can know. show some of my progress. Hopefully I'll have some muscles to show. Yes. You your see, muscles no, I got nothing. will be. But see, this is not jiggling anymore. It used to jiggle. I, I'm this seeing is not jiggling. a start of the bicep right there. Right. right? There. Look that at that. Separation. A couple of times I did it. Yeah. Just remember to stretch after your workouts too and Epsom Mm -hmm. salts. And that's another thing too. When people start a routine, you got to ease into it and you're going to be sore. If you can't take a bath because you're busy for time, our feet are really absorbent. Just stick your feet in Epsom salts. So while you're at your desk, you could just get a baking pan, put some warm water, a cup of Epsom salts and let your feet soak in Epsom salts and it'll help with the soreness. Amazing. Amazing. See so many tricks and tips you have. Thank you so much, my friend. Thank you so much for being here, sharing your knowledge, sharing your wisdom. And thank you so much for being so kind to me and taking me as a challenge client. of yours. No, you're amazing. We're all individuals and we're all perfect. Exactly Mm -hmm. the way we are. We're all doing the best with the tools that we have. Everybody's toolbox is different and we all need to be treated that way. So that's the way I'm always going to treat people. And that's, like I said, I treat people the way I want to be treated. I don't want anyone to ever say that I'm weird or different or need to change something. I want people to help improve my life that are in my life. And I want to help improve their life. I want that symbiotic relationship. That's the yes. world we're going into. Yes. 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 Exactly. Yeah. Same here. Awesome. <laughs> Let's catch up soon. Okay. Thank you again. Thank you.